Today I'm going to show you how you can install an extra storage drive in your laptop. To access the hard drives, you'll need to open up the service compartment of your laptop. On this Acer laptop, it's located here. They may be located on different places on different laptops, and some laptops, like small laptops, doesn't have a service compartment. In that case, you'll need to open up the entire back case of the computer, which means remove all the screws. There we have the last one. And we can now carefully pry this open here. Like that. And we can put it to the side. Here we'll have the M.2 drive as well as the RAM sticks. Now I already have my M.2 drive installed, but I'm going to show you how to remove it and put it back again. And we will just open this up here until it gets released. Just carefully remove it. So here we have the M.2 drive. We can then carefully drag it out. Here we have it, we'll extract the M.2 drive. To install an M.2 drive, you'll do the same thing. We'll see a little small compartment here, and on the motherboard it should say M.2 somewhere. On laptops like this it may be a little bit unclear. If you don't have a M.2 drive compartment anywhere inside your laptop, um, you will unfortunately won't be able to use the M.2 uh, setup like this. In that case you'll need to buy an adapter to SATA and use it as a SATA hard drive. Anyways, we have M.2 on this one, so of course we'll just insert it. All the way in like that. Then we just push it down gently until we can see where we put the screw. Alright, it's securely secured. Here we have the empty hard drive compartment. Now this computer already uses an SSD, an M.2 drive right here. Uh, but we will of course input a, another hard drive into this system right here. So um, here we have the hard drive of choice and we're going to install it there. If you'll just insert it, you will kind of see that um, while we can have it here, it's kind of a little bit loose like this, and that is absolutely not acceptable. This is a little uh, tray that we can put the drive in, and it will put it more securely inside this space. So we will put our hard drive into this one. Right, take the little tray and put the drive securely in it. Then we'll have four screws, so just fasten all of the four screws like this, and I'll do the rest of them like that. You may buy these little trays from a hardware store, online, or even you can recycle them from an old laptop, like I did for this one for example. And now we have this little tray, connect it up like that, and push it down. And now you can see it uh, lays much more securely, but even though I have this little tray, it's not perfect, uh, but it's better. So I'm going to complement with my little foam here, like that. So we have uh, much less chance of it actually disconnecting itself if the computer takes a hit. Now we may just uh, put back this panel, um, put the screws in again, and uh, we are done with inserting this hard drive. To utilize the DVD player as a hard drive disk storage uh, area, you will need a specific part that's called a HDD CADU. Now you can find uh, these installation frames uh, on hardware stores. I bought mine on hardware store. You can get them on eBay. There is also a specialized uh, site that's like hddcaddy.com or something. Not an affiliate. But um, they can offer like specific sizes if you have a very weird kind of laptop. The general HDD Caddy is cheaper and uh, works for most laptops, including this one. And uh, just to utilize a HDD Caddy, you don't actually need a disc player. You just need the space for a disc player. Now, my computer doesn't have a DVD, a Blu-ray drive or something like that. It only has empty space. But it has the expansion capabilities is actually the only thing that matters. Here you can see this little thing here. We have a little lid. You can remove this. You can see the area where your disc player is. 
If you actually have a disc player here, it's uh, much more defined and easy to understand. Now, one screw is holding this thing inside the computer. It's usually located around here. It's not usually one of the deep ones, but one uh, kind of misplaced, or almost looked like, uh, surface screw like this one. And this is the screw we'll need to remove to extract the uh, driver player or the plastic little piece in my, uh, in my case. Now the screw is carefully removed and we can carefully drag out this plastic piece or drive player. So that's what it looked like in my case. We don't need that anymore. Now here we have the HDD Caddy, which is the thing we will replace the drive with. We can just open it up and you can see the shape similarity straight away. Here we have some uh, screws, nice, and uh, some uh, covering panel. However, you can use your old covering panel uh, in almost all cases. Which is this one. And we have some instructions here too that you might want to use. Right, so here we have this little piece of plastic. It's basically all what it is, a kind of adapter. And here we have our drive. So, to insert this drive, we'll just align up the connections. You can see a small a little input there and a small a little connection there. So we'll just uh, angle them down like this and just push in and then down and just see if it's all the way in. And now you can see it's securely attached. Fantastic. Now we can flip this thing over because we will need to attach the screws. I find it easiest to first attach the screw onto the screwdriver and then kind of aim it in there. Now this one lacks a piece that this one lacks and that's this little thing. So we'll just need to remove this little thing here. There we go. And the other one. And place it on the HDD Caddy because um, it has the same type of mount, mount on itself, so it's really nice. Right, we are reusing the metal piece of course, but we need to use the uh, new screws provided with the HDD Caddy, because the old screws are too short for this. Alright, like this. It is now secured. Alright, there we are. Now we can proceed to insert this into the system. And this was the original orientation of the old one, so we'll use the same. And we'll insert it here. And we're going to push it straight in, just like that. Straight in. And if you push it straight, it should connect without any issues. And there we have the little screw hole that keeps it in place. So we should insert a screw here and fasten the uh, HD caddy. All the way down like that. Like that. Just looks much better. When your computer starts it will display a key you need to press to start a BIOS. It's usually F12, Escape, F9, F2. Depends on the system. You see it on screen and click on it several times until you get to BIOS. The BIOS looks differently dependent on the brand. You want to look for something called Boot and click that. Down below you see the different instructions on how to navigate on your BIOS version. To get to boot. And inside of here I can use different keys to reorder this list. It will start with the one on top. If you boot from the wrong drive after installing a new drive, you simply need to change the order these are in. So right now it's this one is the highest and that's correct, so it will start booting from it. However, if for example the one you want to boot from, the drive you want to boot from is on 6, you'll need to move that to number 1 on the list, otherwise it will not boot from the right drive. When you have reordered your list to satisfaction, go to exit and save changes. Your computer should now boot successfully. When you have booted into your Windows system, you just right click the flag 
and select Disk Management or search for Disk Management. Inside of here, you can browse the different disks, you can right click them and also see Open. And if you open it, you can basically explore the disks and check around. You can also find this list via this computer and you can browse around and see which disk is which. All right, so here you can see uh, we get this little prompt, initialize disk. Um, and if you get this little prompt, you of course need to select something. Now, MBR is pretty ancient. GPT is the kind of new one and is uh, required for most new drives. But if you're gonna use this on a really old uh, Windows system, you might change it to MBR, but generally GPT is the way to go for basically everyone should just select OK. To reuse this old drive and basically make it useful in other systems, we of course need to clear it of stuff. So we're just gonna click delete volume and make sure that you have backed up anything you wanna keep there and that you select the right drive because that stuff will be gone. You get a pop-up that it's open in File Explorer because it is. Uh, so basically you will just click yes, but make sure this is really the drive you want to delete. And now it's gone. Now you can see it's unallocated there under disk one. However, there are two more partitions. So we'll just right click and remove them too. Unfortunately, you cannot remove the recovery partition if you have one of those here. So you will need to go into PowerShell Admin by right-clicking the Windows flag and selecting it. See from the list that we are working with Disk 1. Keep that in mind. Write in Disk Part to launch the program we're gonna use here. And now you will write in List Disk to list the different disks. Now, as you can see from the list before, we're working with disk one in this particular case, so write in select disk one. After you have done that, you will need to write in list part to list the partitions. There is only one partition available, so you will write in select part one. Now, you will write in delete part override. And here, did you catch that? It's now gone. You can delete any partition with this method too, by the way. Hover over the unallocated space and right click and select new simple volume. Beautiful. Here is the manager, click next. And here we can see what size you wanna make it. If this is a hard drive, put this to max. You don't wanna waste any space. If this is a solid state drive, an SSD, remove 10 to 5% from that. Select a letter that it will be called in Windows uh, file menu and select something that you don't use currently uh, so that you will not confuse yourself. Uh, in any case, I'll just uh, go down here and select X. So uh, now you can see here, uh, you don't need to do anything with these two and just click next. Here you can see we need to select NTFS or XFAT. XFAT is better if you use uh, some Mac OS with this drive too or something like that, but for Windows drive, it should be NTFS. Write in whatever you want this to be called. This is X files. And under allocation unit size, if you're only gonna store big files on here, well, then you can select um, 64K or the other Macs and it will be a little bit faster in search, good for movies. Perform a quick format if you want this to be quick and uncheck this if you want to give this drive away because that will encrypt anything that was on it previously. Um, if you do the quick format, it will be very instant, but you can actually restore some files that are deleted. So if you're gonna give this away, you'd really want to do the slow format. So don't check uh, fast format in that case. In any case, now you can use this uh, X files uh, as normal, you can use it to store stuff, you can install Steam games on here or whatever. You know, it's very simple. And that's actually all there is to it. You should probably check out this video, which I think you would like. And if not, do leave a like and stay tuned for future videos, because there will come a video that you will like. And of course, do check out our merch. Links in description if you want to get some cool Zoomodism gear going on there. Any case, Thanks a lot for tuning in and I'll see you next time. This is your host Jimmy Desen, signing out.